Welcome, Music Multiverse listeners. This is Beyond Your Radio, and now we're getting to start album review Saturdays in a video log. So in tonight's episode, which is episode 10 of 2023, we're going to review the following albums. Graham Nash's Now, Dave McMurray's Grateful Dedications 2, and the Barnes Stormers, all of which are new releases over the last few weeks in 2023. We're going to start off with uh, Graham Nash. Uh, first introduce my panelists, Mr. Jeff Johnson, Chef Jeff, joining us from Hawaii. Alex stopped on over. Uh, we'll be heading to the Buffalo Bandits game later tonight for the national championship game one. So without further ado, let's talk about Nash's now. I'll let you start off, Jeff. Okay, interesting album. I think that's something that should be on elevator music. Um, it's very, I'm going to say the word blah. It's, and I love Graham Nash. Um, but I have, at least with this album, I have him with problems with him being, being a solo. He is a fun, fabulous uh, with harmony. But when it comes to solo, his voice was flat. His music was flat. And it was, did I listen to it? I listened to the whole thing a few times. Will I listen to it again? Doubtful. It's just nothing that makes me happy. It's, it's almost all the songs, with the exception of a couple, sound almost the same, like they're on the same plane, written by the same person. And, and they're boring. They're just absolutely boring. And as I said, I love Graham Nash. You know, I have mu not much more to say for it. It wasn't, it wasn't a appealing album. Uh, on my side of that, I, I mostly agree with you on, on a lot of the points. So he's a legendary songwriter and he's a harmonizer, right? And when it comes to harmonizing, in this instance, he's harmonizing with himself which makes it a little less interesting to me, right? His vocal signature, you can, you get right away, right? He has a definite vocal signature. Um, that This sits in that folk, rock, country genre in a way, but this is like you said, more elevator, adult contemporary kind of setting. And I think he, you, this is an album where he's taking a more love approach to things instead of being that tongue in cheek political Tit for tat discussions that he's had in his his songwriting. I will say that there's not a lot of pace to the record. It tends to be mellow, as you stated. There, the only time I got really excited were the orchestrations where the string arrangements came in. Those did elevate the musicianship. It did seem to me like whoever produced this record, and I'm going to assume that he kind of probably produced it himself because he has you know all the capabilities of it. It just seemed like it's all in one track. Like every volume of everything is the same. And that kind of um, didn't cut it for me. Um, I am not a, a Nash lover. I, I don't, I, solo album, I don't think I own a single solitary one. I've heard some of the, the solo material back from, you know, his heyday where he got acclaim. I mean, he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame twice. Um, so, I mean, I'm a big fan of Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Even when it's Crosby, Stills, and Nash, it's it's good too, so... Um, this was a little bit disappointing, but I, I can understand people who will enjoy it. It's not it's not poorly produced. It's just our taste wise, it's uh, it's not going to hit, you know, going to hit all the chords I want. It's, it's for the seventy year old in a rocking chair. Almost a nostalgia album of sorts. Yeah, I, I well yeah. here here we are. We're talking about three old this these bands today. These right. people, they're all older and they're producing music, right? Correct. Hey, he what is he eighty? No, he's not that old. He's younger than I am. Um, seventy uh, something. I don't think so. Let's see if I can pull it up. Now he's pulling up. So for our next one, we're going to move on to Dave McMurray. Now, just to give a little background. and I wouldn't have told you he was that. 80. 81. Hey, wow. Uh, legendary jazz tenor saxophonist Dave McMurray. Um, this is his second go round with uh, touching the Grateful Dead uh, music and making uh, his, uh, his take on it. So he enlists his usual Detroit suspects uh, for his band, and his band is tight. There's no question about it. 
And I say this, he takes his Detroit usual suspects to take another round of jazzy jabs at the crowned almighty jam band of all time, the Grateful Dead. And with that, we'll go to our resident deadhead, Chef Jeff. Can you say elevator music? <laughs> I, I'm going to argue you, with you there. Yeah, well, I listened to the whole thing. Through. Now, I have an advantage and a disadvantage. I have heard every single one of those songs at least a thousand times each. Okay? These are all prominent dead songs that have been around for a few decades. Um, I like what he did with it um, in some directions, but I still find them not interesting. Without the vocals, a lot of these songs just don't mean anything. Um, uh, I like his horn work, but it didn't always match the songs. I found myself, I found myself singing the song in my head and all of a sudden he'd go on a different tangent. And I wasn't sure if that was right or not, or if it was doing justice to the song. Would it be something I'd listen to again? Absolutely not. I just, I'd rather listen to the dead do the song than him do. Now I have heard, and, and I'll send you some later, Mark, some, uh, dead de uh, people who have done dead albums, their versions of the songs, and they're really, really quite good. Some of them, but this one I don't think did any justice to the dead at all. Nothing. Um, did I like the album? I knew the songs. I knew all the words to the songs, but there were no words to that on that album. So, uh, although Jamie Johnson sings on it on the one track, yeah, yeah the one track, sings. yeah. So would you but, say part of your uh, disadvantage is the fact that you are a dad expert on this? Yeah, and that is best really a disadvantage. Because, you know, when you know every song by heart, your expectations and exactly are how it goes. You know, Mo, my expectations are way up there. And I didn't get it. Because I look when I read, read first read the, the album, I said, Oh, this is gonna be great. And then I said, no, I don't think so. Uh, nothing wrong with the songs. I know them all, but the, his interpretation of them um, leaves a lot to, to be desired, at least to my point. Okay. So now we'll, we'll go to a non-aficionado of the Grateful Dead. Myself, I, I knew a few of the songs um, by reputation uh, and by note. I thought the addition of Jamie Johnson to sing didn't do anything whatsoever for anything. Uh, it's a jazz record. So I took it at face value as a jazz record to start. Um, obviously, the Grateful Dead are an improvisational type of band. So they would have an appreciation. And so would the jazz musician, musician because he can, he can do what he wants to do with it. That's what they do, too, on stage, right? That's, that's the, 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 the whole thing behind a Grateful Dead live show, right? You never know what's going to happen, right? Somebody takes it well, off. I don't, actually, I don't agree with that at all. They no. are not improv by any means. They have they all their stuff has music, and when they go into quote unquote space jam, they know where they're going and where they're coming back. Okay, other with, with jazz a lot, it is improv. They take they go on one line and they shoot it in that direction and see where it bounces. The Grateful Dead are have a lot more symmetry and a lot more um, structure. Well, I, I guess for there, there's a formula to yes, I, I would yes, right. But they, I mean, like you said, they know where they were going and where they were headed. Um, my, my problem with this record is the everything. No, I overall I found the tempo and the greatness of the record to start much later once the organ came in, piano and organ. Okay, that that to me it seemed more fitting and allows the saxophone to take a back seat. I don't consider the dead a saxophone type of band and the sax is leading this. And I don't, I don't see the connection, right? There's the guitar starts to come in a little bit better at that. So the second half of this record, I was a little bit more enthusiastic about, but everything, you know, wind instruments are not the backbone of, of a, of a grateful dead record or a grateful dead show. As far as I know, um, maybe they had them in there, but they're not, they're added pieces against guitar, drum, um, they would they would have to realize that the writing um 
it, it as much as it's improvisational on on Dave McMurray's end, I think that this album falls a little bit into a, just a jazz record, and the saxophone is too much for for it, because you know it's the Grateful Dead. If it wasn't the Grateful Dead, it wouldn't matter. I don't think. I think it'd be a better record if it wasn't the Grateful Dead. Well, and and, and um, uh, Alex uh, uh, made a good point. I am a I'm not going to say expert, but I know the dead very, very well. And I expect it to be something when it's not. And to my knowledge, and I may be wrong about this, but the dead have never had any type of sax or wind instrument um, with them in, in the many, many people who had joined them. Yeah, uh, I would have thought so, too. I, I'm, I'm, again, I'm speaking off the top of my head, you know, and I don't know. I've never followed them to any degree, but I, I was pretty sure that, you know, jam band i don't remember horn sections and stuff but it, it's interesting to hear the horn i don't think it it added much i don't know what's interesting is he this is the second one you know he's done this twice which means it got a pretty good acclaim the first time so or or crazy once crazy twice i mean you've also got don was is on here bob james and larry campbell there's some yeah. great musicians on this I, I would take a different approach to that i'd say that this done a second time is how much he enjoys putting this together too I think, be, I think at that be. point too the whole point of doing this with a saxophone and trying to go with a little bit more horns which they normally aren't is just to give it a totally different twist in his wheelhouse of something that he likes to listen to it should have been yeah. called the horny <laughs> dead the horny dead <laughs> and on that crazy note <laughs> yeah let's move on let's move on to uh, uh, the Barnstormers. Okay. I'm going to lead this one and then I'll, we'll see what Jeff Jeff says. So this is Jimmy Barnes, B A R N E S. Don't look, go looking for Barnstormers, like a barn that you build out back. This is Jimmy Barnes, who used to be in a band called Cold Chisel. He's actually more known on my end to being in one of the best soundtracks of all time, which is The Lost Boys. He sang his, he had a song on there as well as a duet with Michael Hutchins from In Excess. Uh, he is a fantastic vocalist at his age. He has a great rock voice and he's still got that soul in there in his voice because I mean, he is over his age, you know, for, for holding on to that. The other part is this is Jules Holland. All right. The pianist from uh, the UK who is a brilliant pianist, but he has one of the best music shows that has ever been put to television called Later with Jules Holland. So then you've got these other band members who are just as equally talented. Chris Cheney, who's the front man for The Living End and the guitar. Slim Jim Phantom, who's the drummer and percussions for the found and founding member of the Stray Cats. And then Kevin Shirley, who's playing bass. He's a producer and audio mixer. He's been with Silverchair, Aerosmith, Iron Maiden, Black Pros, Joe Bonamassa, Beth Hart, Led Zeppelin, Slayer, Metallica. So this is a well-produced record. It is. It sounds great, but it's old school rock and roll, you know. Very old it's, school. It's very old school, and you got you got parts where you're you're thinking Elvis Presley. You're going back to goodness gracious, great balls of fire. There are familiar licks, okay, because that's where this type of music stands. It's not going to win an award. It's not going to be the greatest album of all time, but it's a feel good record from start to finish, and they don't stop the tempo from any for anything. It stays that way throughout the whole thing. And every song is different in its uh, makeup. And the lyrics are fun. They're engaging. They're very well written, in my opinion. I, I really like the record. Uh, and I enjoyed it very much. And I, I immediately called Chef Jeff and I go, this is getting added to the three albums. And he says, okay, I'll listen to it. So here we go. Chef Jeff. Well, uh, so as I said, a few hours ago, Mark calls me and says, we're adding another album. I said, I haven't listened to it. He says, well, you better. So I had to go do the dishes. So I put on my headphones and, and I will tell you the album's excellent for washing dishes with. So <laughs> but, uh, what can I say? It's an upbeat, moving album. Uh, it reminded me of Creedence Clearwater, Bruce Springsteen, and um, uh, the Stray Cats had a baby. That's what, that's what we would come up with. Um, <laughs> rocky very rocky um um i call it rockabilly a lot of it a little yeah. bit of country rock a little bit of blues all kinds of stuff mixed in 
Um, their song, the only, if I have a negative in this album, is the transition of songs. I found them more like this. You know, it wasn't a smooth one way or another. It no, was it the flow of the record is, yeah, it's jumbled. Right. It, it, yeah. But no, there wasn't a song I didn't like. Uh, I thought it was great. Uh, uh, Barnes can really mix it up voice wise. He he can he can sing rock. He can sing the blues. You know, I enjoy the album. Um, I'm sure I'll listen to it again. This is a great album to listen to if you want to be upbeat because that's where it's yeah. going to put you to. I'm you know, now forever going to judge albums on a scale of zero to dishwashable. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It gets five stars. You can wash dishes to it, man. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. A single one. And you don't yep. hate dishwashing while you listen to it. <laughs> exactly. Well, well, Jeff, what about this one? Oh, this is an album you peel potatoes to. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. That would that would have been uh, Nash's uh Nash's Yeah, uh, Nash's album <laughs> peeling potatoes too. I love you, but I'm gonna have to kill myself. This is getting yeah. terrible. All right, yeah. So I hope oh. everybody enjoyed this. Uh, you got something else, Jeff? You all right? I didn't know whether you're gonna say something. I, I was hope... having a stroke. I was having a stroke. It's okay. <laughs> so uh, with album review Saturdays, we're probably gonna make this now a video every week when we when I set these out. So the video will come out at the same time as the article. Be on the lookout for that. This was a lot of fun. I'm hoping to bring more panelists in on these records and and have somebody else's opinion besides my own. And literally bring them in. And literally, yeah, have them stop by and have a drink. <laughs> well, happy listening, everyone. <laughs>